songs have been talking about heaven so we'll just sing about our home glad it's gonna be a reality one day yes, talk sir. about it a lot we sing about it a lot preach about it a lot but one day it's gonna be a reality yes sir. somewhere beyond the grave there is a land where Jesus went to prepare For the same by grace, there is a resting place, and then a few more days, it will be mine. Some call it heaven, I call it home. Some call to come some call it heaven I call it home some call it dreaming let me dream on some call it paradise somewhere Let's see what we're going to do. And I don't have my glasses, <coughs> so I may have to. So you know the <laughs> We'll just sing an old one if y'all don't care to listen again. Yeah. It's shame. 
shame and reproach gladly bear. Then he'll call me someday to my home far away, where his glory forever I'll share. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. To be well known of men, I may not ever be, and I'm sure my name will not go down in history. There'll be no marble plaques to tell of my good deeds, nor any great parades to honor me but there's a record book my name is written in and it was recorded there when i was born again no one can blot it out it's sealed forevermore it's in that book of life kept by the lord for every deed i do for every word i say there is a record kept until the judgment day my name will not be lost misplaced or overlooked for it's kept safely in god's record book for there's a record book my name is written in it was recorded there when i was born again no one can plot it out it's sealed forevermore it's in that book of life kept by the lord for there's a record book my name is written in and it was recorded there when i was born again no one can plot it out it's sealed forevermore it's in that book of life kept by the lord amen, amen. amen. i'm glad that on the 21st day of august 1972 the book was open and my name was wrote down i'm glad of that tonight and i'm glad there ain't enough devils in hell to change that either ain't nothing i think jesus said it in john 10 said there wasn't nobody able to pluck him out of his hands and even his father's hands today so i'm glad i'm i'm kept I'm kept. Turn, if you will, tonight into the book of Acts, chapter 3. Acts, chapter 3. Good to be in the house of the Lord tonight and know that God's real, that He's not something somebody thought up and uh, conjured up somewhere back through the centuries and uh, said, well, that sounds good. But I'm glad it's the hand of God that put this thing together and it's God's hand that's going to keep it yeah. And it's God's hand's going to take it out of here one day after a while. Man, I ain't got nothing to do with it. Uh, you pray for the Shope family up in Polk County. Brother Larry died yesterday and they are burying him this evening. Or have already buried him by now. But uh, Brother Larry was a good friend. 
And remember, remember that family when you pray. Uh, some of them go to uh, Greasy Creek. Some of them go to ball, or did go to ball play. So he, uh, he's a man. He used to work out there at uh, Buckner and Rush out there on Wildwood at the funeral home back years ago. But you pray for that family tonight as you pray. That, that wife's had a, had a battle for the last several years with him. He had uh, dementia to real bad, and then he had uh, a lot of heart trouble, a lot of physical trouble, too, with it. And she, she's had a battle for the last couple of years. Okay, but in the book of Acts tonight, chapter 3, Acts chapter 3, verses 1, the Bible said, Now Peter and John went up together, into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fasting his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. And Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood, walked, and entered with them into the temple, walking and, le and uh, leaping and praising God. I want to think back to verses 6 tonight, where the Bible said, uh, Peter said, unto, uh, said uh, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. I want us to think tonight on this thought tonight. What have you got to offer. I want you to think about it tonight because it's a crucial question in our day and hour uh, that we're living in. What tonight have you and I got to offer out there in the world that we live in and that we associate with day in and day out? Uh, we uh, work in, we, are, uh, we buy and sell in. Everything we do is uh, in the world uh, tonight. Day. And the world we know uh, is in critical shape. Uh, the world we know today uh, is in bad shape uh, by the sin of the world and all the in it. But we're looking here and we see enough time. We're seeing a situation. A man that was the Bible said uh, that was lame from his mother's womb. Uh, the Bible said he was 40 year old. Uh, the Bible said he saw Somebody uh, brought him to that gate uh, every day uh, and that to set him down uh, and let him big arms uh, uh, that might sustain him uh, in this walk of life. This man uh, uh, didn't have a chance in the world of changing uh, who he was. I mean, there was nothing he could do uh, uh, that would change his situation uh, in the life uh, that had been chosen for him. Him. I, he didn't have no control over it. He was born that way. I, it wasn't something that he done I, I, that caused this situation. I, it was I, it was something I, that he was born with and that was out of his control. And I begin to think about uh, Peter. I, they, he was expecting a handful of money, maybe, or uh, alms or something from him. I, I, but when he, Peter looked at him. I, Peter had compassion on his situation. It wasn't that he was a bum. It wasn't that he was a beggar. But it was that he was crippled, sitting at the gate daily, and that begging for something from God's people that went in and out. Day in and day out. I no doubt he'd I've been there, and I know there's two or three different messages in this little old scripture here, but my thinking is, is what if we uh, have got to offer not tonight uh, to the world that we live in? Amen. We're God's people. 
We're God's chosen tonight. Uh, we're God's purpose tonight on the face of this earth. We're, uh, we're uh, God incarnated through uh, the new birth. Uh, we're the only representative that God has tonight. Amen. Paul said we were ambassadors to Christ. Amen. Uh, we're the representation of God Almighty. We're the representation of His Son, Jesus Christ, and the mercy He shone for and that when He died on Calvary's hill. We're it tonight. I mean, we uh, don't go around expecting somebody else to take care of the problem. Uh, you and I are the only uh, uh, answer to the problem tonight. Nobody else. Politics ain't the answer. No. Oh, good deeds is not the answer. Uh, money's not the answer. Wealth's not the answer. And intellect's not the answer. Uh, but Jesus Christ is the answer tonight. Amen. Amen. I begin to think about this. What do we what what have you, you and I got to offer tonight to the world? Stephen, we find him in the sixth chapter of the book of Acts. Uh, we find Stephen, one of the first uh, deacons, one of the first uh, men of God that was chosen out of the multitude uh, to be uh, up front in uh, his ministry, up front where everybody could see. And when he did, God, you see, he didn't choose this position, but they chose it of him to be in this position. God laid his hand on him. God, they prayed about it, and God laid his hand on them, and they chose Stephen and anointed him to be the first deacon. Well, he could have served the table, uh, the communion table. He could have took up the offering. He could have filled that position uh, as some are filling it today. But that's not the job. I know the job as a deacon is to take care of the house of God, be responsible uh, for the needs in the house of God and in the community around. I know that tonight. I've been ordained for it. I've served in that office. I understand that office. Uh, but my first, uh, uh, my first objective uh, wasn't just to serve the house of God. My objective was to serve mankind. God's people needs to get out there. Stephen started taking the gospel out there. You see... We go out there and we knock on doors, and I don't mean to sound critical tonight to visitation, uh, but 95% of visitation is a waste of church people's time and the people they're knocking on the doors. Yeah. Boy, it got quiet that time, didn't it? Yeah. But it is. You go out there every evening and you disturb folks by knocking on their door and they come to the door laying down whatever they're doing. They come to the door and you invite them to church. You wasted their time and yours too. They're not coming. If they was, they'd already be here. If they was interested, they'd already be here. And I'm not being critical. I've been, in, I've been in this situation times after times. I've knocked on the same doors that I'm talking about. I've been rejected by the same ones. I've been frowned on. And then I've been the one back years ago that was on the other side of the door. I've been that one that you disturbed or they disturbed. But Stephen took the gospel out there. You say, preacher, they don't they ain't gonna like me. They didn't like Stephen. They didn't like him either. But he didn't let that deter him from taking the gospel out there to them. Paul said, I believe in Romans 1, verses what, 14 through 16, I believe it is. Paul said, uh, like, he said it like this. Uh, he said, I'm a debtor in verses 14. I'm a debtor. I may mean, hear a man is that say, born in the family of God, and I, I know in his responsibility wasn't necessarily to God Almighty, but it was to his fellow person. And he said, I'm a debtor. You and I are debtors tonight to that world out there. We came out of that world. God chose you and I 
in that world to come out of that world and become part of his family in this walk of life. I didn't choose the Lord. And I don't think you did either. He chose you. He chose you as much as those folk, uh, those early Christians chose Stephen to be a deacon. God chose you and I, me. And Paul said in uh, verses one, four, uh, chapter 1, verses, in Romans chapter 1, verses 14 through 16, I'll get it right in a minute. He said, I'm a debtor. Then in next, he, next thing he said, he said, I'm ready. I wish I could fire up a group of Baptists in our little area around here uh, to get ready uh, to do something for God. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, it'd be good. There'd be some pastors around that would come by and hug my neck every once in a while. If I could just get them fired up and get them ready to do what God wants done. Yeah. Oh, okay. Paul said, I'm a debtor. He said, I'm, I'm ready. And then he concluded with, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation uh, to all but believe, uh, to the Jew first, and also the Greek. I'm not ashamed. He said, I'm a debtor, I'm ready, and I'm not ashamed. I've had visitation back when I was a pastor, and I've encouraged visitation. I've uh, trained uh, to be a, uh, on visitation. I've trained others to do the same thing. I've took them out, and I've seen them ashamed of Christ. They was willing to go because I pressured them into it. I was their pastor. Uh, I didn't give them a whole lot of options, let's be honest with you. Because I want them to get past that, uh, that bashfulness. I want them to get past that timidness. I want them to get past all that and let them uh, find out what it is uh, to help win somebody to Jesus Christ. One of the greatest joys that you'll ever experience as a Christian is leading somebody to Jesus. He that winneth souls is wise. That's the word. God said if you want to be a wise person, win somebody. And it's easy enough. It's simple enough. Uh, you say, preacher, I don't know what to say. You look this away and you can see another that ain't got the foggiest study of what to say. I ain't got no written formula. But when I sit down with a person to talk with them, God will do that, that part right there. He'll give me what to say. He'll give you what to say also. You may stutter and stammer and carry on. But you'll, if you take the gospel, that's all you got to take. What's the gospel? It's, uh, it's, it's Christ Jesus hanging on a cross, died uh, that for your sin, washed you in, your blood, in his blood, and I was buried, and on the third day he rose for your justification. Simple as falling off of a log backwards. Now ain't nowhere near as dangerous. All Stephen took to him was the gospel. And the Bible said in, uh, what is it? The uh, Bible said uh, that they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. I've been there. You say, well, you're a preacher. Sure I am, but that ain't got a thing in the world to do with it. That ain't got nothing to do with it. It's all you got to do is take them to the gospel. That's all Stephen took. But let's dig a little deeper. In Acts chapter 10, and you're going to find another one that, uh, that went out there, and that was, I believe it was Peter, went to Cornelius. And he was a man that was hesitant to even be I even to leave where he was at and father I'd take off after those other men and go down to Cornelius' house. He was hesitant. You remember the story? God said, go with him, go with them, nothing doubting. Go on. Yeah. Don't be hesitant. I've been in situations when I was hesitant. 
I mean, I miss being up front, will you? I've been hesitant when God spoke to my heart to go talk to somebody. I've been hesitant because I knew that somebody and they knew me. And I was hesitant. But when I went on and followed the leadership of the Holy Spirit, God through the Holy Spirit I took his word and he distributed his word through me to them. The only hope they have is the word of God. They ain't got no other hope. You, can't, you cannot sell them on being a Baptist and expect them to go to heaven. Being a Baptist won't let, won't send, won't, ain't a card to get you in. You can be the best Baptist in the world. I'm talking about a, a, a die in the world Baptist and die and go to a devil's hell. Baptists won't get it. A Methodist won't get it. A Pentecostal won't get it. None of those religions will get it tonight. Jesus Christ, salvation by grace through faith is the only answer. And he took it to them. And he said the salvation is, a, he, he, when Peter got there to Cornelius' house, uh, God had already prepared everything uh, that uh, Cor, uh, Peter just stepped in uh, to something that God had already uh, had fixed up. And you see, if we're hesitant sometimes, just stop and think. If God's sending you somewhere, you, he's already ahead of you. Right. Amen. Remember he sent Abraham to the top of the mountain with a, a hand uh, with some fire and a knife and a sacrifice. Supposedly. But you see, God was already ahead of him on that mountain. Way ahead of him on the mountain. He thought the, he thought the boy was going to be the sacrifice, and it wasn't the boy, it was the ram. But anyhow, he got, he got there and he told, uh, he told Cornelius, Cornelius and his uh, bunch of folk, he said, uh, salvation is a gift of God to everybody that will believe. Oh, yeah. It is a gift. The wages of sin, Romans 6, 23, all of us can quote it. For the uh, wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gift. Ain't something you can earn. It ain't something you can work to. Uh, it ain't something that uh, that you can achieve by your own actions tonight. I had them to tell me when I was lost, blind. If you can just quit cussing, if you can quit this and you can quit that, uh, there's a hope for you. That didn't have a thing in the world to do with. It. Not a thing in the world. I could have quit cussing, never cussed another lick in my life, and it wouldn't have changed a thing. I was lost on my way to hell. Yeah. That ain't what we need out there trying to get them to do. I can't stop nobody from their low down sorry ways, and you can't either. I had some good people to try it on me, and it never did work. Eddie Stillman sitting back there, and he can amen that. Never, never changed the thing. Good people. I'm talking about serious, sincere folk that cared about me, that tried to change who I was. You can't change a leopard from its spots. You can't change an Ethiopian his color either. But God can do the changing. Amen. Peter told, Peter told him, said, Whosoever believeth in him shall receive the remission of sin. All you've got to do is believe. You see, Peter didn't go down there and invite them to the church in Jerusalem. He invited them to Jesus. Invited them to Jesus. I got news for you. You go out there and knock on the door and you get, uh, you get those folk and you sit down and talk with them about Jesus and you uh, lead them to salvation by grace through faith, they'll find them a church. They'll find them one. I didn't get saved in the church building. I got saved in a pine thicket, as most of you know. But I found me a church. I was on Thursday. Our Thursday evening, I found me a revival meeting. 
And I've been in church ever since. You could probably count on that hand right there the times I've missed church in all the years. Found me a church. Amen. Then when Sunday come, I found me one that I could go to, stand before and tell them what happened to me and ask them to receive me in, in the church and be baptized. Didn't nobody twist my arm. Nobody didn't heard me uh, out Sunday morning and head me for church. Oh, I, I couldn't wait. Couldn't wait to get to church. Been that way ever since. Been that way ever since. But I got to hurry. Let's dig a little deeper. In Acts chapter 26 through 39, you'll find another fellow. And this man was a preacher, Philip. Another deacon, but he was also a preaching deacon. This man, he was in revival meeting, we all know. And the Holy Spirit told him, said, Philip, he said, go down to that desert place. Well, Philip had had so much experience with the Lord, he didn't even hesitate. He just took off to the desert. Here he went. No idea what God had down there at that desert, but knowing through the experiences of the Lord that God had something good that was down there in that desert. He went down there. We, uh, we know that he got there and here comes, here comes a chariot out across the desert with an Ethiopian driving the chariot. Or the, and he's got a book open there and he's studying that book. And the Holy Spirit said, join yourself with that chariot. And the Bible said he, I don't know, he had maybe run it down, I don't know. But he joined himself to that chariot and he asked that eunuch, he asked him, said, do you understand what you read? And he said, how can I? Without somebody telling me, somebody learning me. There's enough education right here in this building today to turn Gordon County on its ear. Knowing the scriptures. You don't have to know it from Genesis through Revelations. You don't have to quote uh, uh, verses like your pastor does. Of course, he's been my hero, and I've tried why I quote so much. I've been copy, trying to copy after him all these years. And I'm still a failure on that part. But you say you don't have to do that. All you got to know is the experience that you had with Christ Jesus somewhere at one time in your life. Go look up one of the greatest preachers, I guess you could call him, that's ever walked this ground on two feet. He got to, he got to write 14 of those books that you and I carry around and call the Bible. And his first messages was nothing more than his conversion. Right. All it was. How God struck him down on the road to Damascus, how he was led in, how he sat for three days, uh, uh, how that Ananias came to him, how the Holy Spirit came on him. That's all his message was. Simple, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's told his experience. And it worked because it was the gospel working in somebody's life. Philip said, you understand? And Philip, that Enoch said, no. And Philip started it right where he was at, which is the 53rd chapter of Isaiah. He started right there, right where he was at, oh, yeah. and told him about Jesus. Yeah, yeah. All he told him about. He didn't get in depth with the scriptures. He didn't uh, have a degree in theology. He just told him the simple Jesus and how God through Jesus Christ loved an old Ethiopian eunuch. And that old eunuch accepted. Accepted. He let come down there and he said, what hinders me from being baptized? And Philip said, there ain't a thing in the world if you believe. Amen. Amen. Not a thing. And he said, I believe. And Philip baptized him. And he went on his way. Amen. Let's dig a little deeper. Over in the book of 2 Kings, somewhere around chapter 5, you're going to find a man that had leprosy. He was a great man. He was a leader of his 
people at that point in time. He was an outstanding fellow, but he had a disease that there was no cure for. And they was a little old maid that had been captured down yonder and brought up there. He'd probably bought her and uh, put her in his household maybe to attend to his wife. I don't know. And the Bible don't say. But it does say she was a maid and she was of the house in his household. And it was probably her responsibility uh, to take care of the house. But she saw this fellow now he was an enemy. As far as uh, it goes, he was an enemy. But she had compassion on him. She reached out because of his disease. Uh, as she reached out to him and said, if you was back down yonder where I come from, you could get some help. Let me, let me insert something right here. And I know there's some of you here saying, I can't do this and I can't do that. That may be true. I won't argue the point with you. But you can find you somebody that'll help you. Right here sets a man that'll help you at any time, day or night. If you got somebody on your heart that needs uh, uh, to be uh, talked to about Jesus Christ, I can guarantee you this man will go with you. If he don't, I will. Give, my, give me a ring. I live at Chatsworth. I can, I can be in Gordon County in a little while. I run up and down this here for over 30 years of making a living, so I know I can make it down here. I mean, I, I'm serious with you tonight. And she said, if you was back down yard at my place, back where I come from, she said, I can tell you how to get some help. We know the story of Naaman. He, he took her into a word. He cut out or back down there. But he went about it backwards. We know that. But you see, she didn't know all to tell him. I, and sometimes maybe you don't know all to tell him. Or maybe you're hesitant. Or maybe you're backward. Maybe you're timid. Whatever the condition is a relative tonight, get you some help. It's that simple. Get you some help. Back when we went out on visitation, they wasn't, none of us went out one, just one or two of us. Always in four. I tried, or most time it was five of us. I tried to get a, a man and a wife and a, a man and a wife. Tried it that way. And then I was maybe the leader. Until I could train them up to where they could go on their own. Where they'd have the confidence. And I've got to see people get saved and I've got to see them shout the praises of God. I've got to see them, uh, uh, their confidence so great that it was un um, unbelievable. I had one deacon's wife, and she was real timid. She was a great cook, and if we had eating to do, uh, some kind of eating at the church to do, uh, she was one of the first ones that volunteered to cook, and that woman could cook. She was good at that. But she was real timid when it come to talking to other folks. But her husband was right the opposite. He could eat and he, he could talk. But I put them together and I said, now come on, I mean you make a good pair. We went to let, went to talk to this 85 year old man that was lost. And I, I started talking and I just looked over at her and I, I said, Johnny, talk to this man. And that Holy Spirit come on that woman and you wouldn't believe how she witnessed to that 85 year old man. And my tears began to run down her cheek. And that old man got saved laying flat of his back that night. And that was the happiest woman. I mean she walked on cloud nine around that church for a while. She couldn't believe that God let her do that. But God let you do the same thing. He let you do the same thing. Let you do the same thing. You see, this maid, she knew what could happen if he got down there and got a hold of the right fella. She knew. And I'm coming to the close. John 10, 28 and 29. Another fella made you a promise. He said, if you'll come to me, I'll give you eternal life. 
He didn't promise you nothing else. He didn't promise you big money. He didn't promise you notoriety. He didn't promise you all these things. He just said, if you'll come to me, I'll give you eternal life. How simple can it get? And then he, made, he didn't stop there. John 10, if you want to, flip over and look at it. John 10, 28 and 29. He said, I give unto them eternal life. Then he turned around and made you a promise. He said, you'll never perish. I'll give you something that you can anchor a life in, that you can live by, and then you can die by it. Give you something. It's what Jesus said. That's who the best fellow I'm talking about. And he said, you'd never perish. He said, no man can pluck you out of my hand or my father's hand. No Amen. man. Amen. Let me say this tonight. Let me ask you the question once more. What have we got to offer tonight? Canaan Land Baptist Church, is that what we're offering? Won't work. Won't work. Ain't a church up and down this country, Murray County, Gordon County, any other county, that has the answer if it ain't Jesus Christ tonight. Recreation won't get it done. All these things that some of the bigger churches in Murray County, don't know about Gordon County, Murray County, Whitfield County is offering tonight is as having a handful of sand. That's all you're going to get when you get there. And you can hang on to a handful of sand as long as you want to and you can go grip it as tight as you can go but you'll open it one day and you ain't got enough in it to, for nothing. You lost it all. It won't stay in there. Try it. Try it. handful of sand you can't hold on to. And that's all they're offering. They ain't offering something that you can anchor a life to Amen. and build. That you can anchor a marriage to and build on. That you can anchor a job to and build on. They're not offering that. But they're offering you something that's just a fly-by-night deal. You wake up one morning and there you are. Worse shape than he was when you started. That was my biggest fear before I got saved. You see, I worked with a lot of folk. Been around a lot of folk. And I saw somebody come get a song. And I saw the hopelessness of church members. I saw them that was just as hopeless as I was. I saw them involved in the same thing I was. I saw them talking just exactly like I did. And yet they claimed to know that they belonged to a church. They claimed that they know Jesus. Something wrong with that picture. Something wrong with it. And it scared me to death. God, if you ain't got something better than that to offer me, leave me alone. I'm going to die and go to hell anyhow. If you can't come up with something better than that, I'm miserable enough the way I am. Leave me alone. I'm glad he come up with something better. <laughs> he come up with something better. He come up with something that took and washed this old man, not on the outside, but on the inside. Cleaned him and made him pure and white on the inside. And then what was on the inside began to work itself to the outside. And it changed the outside too. It changed the outside. I'm glad he can do that tonight. You may be here tonight and maybe you're one of those timid ones that I'm talked to. Maybe you're one of those that is hesitant. Maybe you're just a young Christian. I don't know. I don't know your heart. But let me say this to you tonight. God saved you for a purpose. He didn't just save you to go to heaven. You got something to do while you're down here. Remember what Jesus said? He said, while I'm here, he said, I'm the light of the world. But he said, I'm going away. And he said, when I go away, ye will be the light of the world. 
What did Jesus do while he was here? What did he do? He let his light shine. And then he gave you, a, you and I a word of encouragement. He said, let your light so shine that men might see your good works and glorify the Father Amen. Amen. which is in heaven. Yes, Lord. He said, what man lighteth a candle and put it under a bushel? You see the point I'm trying to make tonight? I'm, I'm not here to chew you out. I'll leave that to Isaac. I am here to encourage. And I know, I know this folk right here in this settlement, this community, that's hurting. And you got the answer. You are the answer. You are the answer that they're hunting for. And if you'll take it out there, it ain't going to cost them nothing. It's free. It ain't going to cost you nothing either. You're going to... You're going to profit by it if you do it right. You're going to profit by it. Lay up treasures in heaven. Is that what the book said? And let me say this. And there's an old song back years ago. I believe the primitive had out fallen leaves. Remember it? And in that song it said the only thing you're going to take to heaven is what you sinned before you. How true that was. About the only thing I found in the song that I agreed with. But it is. The only thing you're going to take to heaven is what you sinned before you. The only thing. You're here tonight and you're timid. If you're here tonight and you're hesitant, why don't you come and get fortified? God can fortify you. God can give you new courage. He gives Stephen new courage to the point that even when they were stoning him to death, uh, they looked on his face as the face of an angel. And he said, don't hold this sin to their charge. He still had compassion, even though they was killing him. Jude said it like this. He said, some having compassion, making a difference. As we stand together tonight and as we sing, if you're here tonight,